thank you for coming back to Kingfish Racing Channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create your very own bun box. Now, this bun box is already completed. It plugs in via USB cable, and uh, pretty much any of these buttons can be mapped through iRacing or any of the other racing games that you probably play. I play iRacing, so I have all these buttons mapped, like this one checks my tires, how worn they are, this one changes my black box, um, this one might be my fuel, like how much fuel I have left, this may be like what place I'm in, changing, you know, parameters in the car and things like that. This one I honestly use as my ignition, I turn it on and off. And this is my start stop button. So pretty much what you can do with this button box is you can plug it into your computer. I just plugged in mine via USB to show you that the start stop does light up, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to show you the parts that you need to build a button box just like what I built and how to actually build it. And it should be a very simple process. I am not a handy person whatsoever. So this is all new to me. I just built it on the whim. I read something online. And that was it. All so, right, so now onto the parts that you need to build this button box. So the first thing you're gonna wanna buy is a joystick controller. It comes with a USB cable, okay? It comes with the wires necessary to plug in for your buttons. All right, so you have the joystick controller, the wires, and pretty much this wire here plugs into the joystick panel there. The blue and white would hook up to your buttons. You can pick any kind of button you want. It doesn't have to be the buttons that I picked for my button box, but these are the buttons that I bought. Okay, so you buy these buttons here. Uh, it comes with all sorts of different colors and um, you could set it up any way you want. The other thing is if you want to switch, now this one has a red cap on it. It just screws on and off the red cap. But this one goes up and down. My switch goes up and then automatically comes back down. That's the way I wanted it. This switch toggles up and comes back down or toggles down and then comes back up. Um, so that's what I use for my ignition switch. The next thing that you want to buy, and this is one of the more important things, and now you want to know how big do you want your button box. All right, so the one I built was perfect for me. I have, I have on my button box 10 buttons, all right? So I also thought I was gonna make a bigger button box. This is a much bigger box, but you can buy these on Amazon. They open up, so all your components go in here. Then you have the box. I already have some holes drilled here, but um, yeah, and then as you could look closely, you could see carbon fiber. That's what I'm gonna get to next. And you could buy a roll of carbon fiber. I think this is only like a few dollars on Amazon. Comes with a knife because you're gonna want to cut it. Some it's optional things to make your life a little easier. I bought these uh, screw heads, um, drill bits. Now they're they're made to really drill through metal, but it makes your life easier because it has numbers here and it tells you how big the uh, hole you're making is, so you don't over drill and make the hole too big for the buttons or too small for the buttons. So the last thing that I bought that is really unnecessary is a rib set. And what that does is it puts these little rivets inside the button box. So you drill a little hole and you put these rivets in. I believe mine are an M6. So I have an M6 bolt and I can bolt it right to my racing cockpit. So the rib set is a great product so this is it it looks scary it really is easy to use you put your rivet on top it comes with a bunch of rivets here um, and you pick the size you want I would say M6 M8 you drill a hole in your button box you put the rivet on top you squeeze like this it squeezes the rivet in then you have a spot to drill your stuff so in. let me show yeah. you now what I what I did to hook everything up all right so we have our holes for our button box you know where you want to put your button so let you say you want to put your button here and here where I already have some holes, okay? And you need to take your your wire that came with your joystick controller. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna snip these wires and I'm just gonna strip so I can get to the wire here. And pretty much, you know, just the white goes on the left side here or the positive and the blue would go into the negative. All right, so now we have the wire hooked up to the button. Wire, button, okay? And you're just gonna weed the wire on in, like so. All right, 
And then we're going to take our joystick controller. You see these white little spot, little slots there? Those are all our slots that we can add buttons to. I believe the controller that I have can add 12 buttons, but you can buy ones that add more. So we just take this and plug it in like so. And now this is USB, and I'll show you how to plug that in next. Controller in here, and what, what I would do is I would take some Velcro and Velcro it to the bottom so this doesn't move around and you won't ever hear it. Next thing I would do is see how we have a hole here, is figure out where do you want your USB cable to come out so it, it's not distracting to you or, or anybody else and it, and it flows through with your button box. And make it big enough so the USB cable could go on through. So we're going to weed this on in there. Now you can get a, a rubber grommet for there to make that look a little nicer. Um, you don't see it anyway once it's plugged in. Plug this bad boy in, put the lid on, and essentially there's your button box with your wire, and then you can plug it into your your USB hub or your computer, and your computer will pick this up as a joystick controller, and you could you can uh, arrange the buttons as you want. This is what your button box will look like once it's completed. So you have your, you know, whatever buttons you decide to pick. I'll, I'll put a link in the description for all the buttons. And then I put two slots here so my button box doesn't move at all while I'm playing. First button box I ever made, but you can make it essentially the same way I just showed you. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. I do get back to my comments. I can even leave you my email address if you'd like and, and you can email me and I'd be more than happy to help anybody build their button box. But it's so simple. Do not spend $200 on a button box when you can simply just create your own. Like I said, I had no prior experience with any of this prior to building this one and it came out awesome and I use it every single time I race. Well, good luck building your bump box. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one.